us that Jesus blesses him the Father. Yes. Keep us strong in the word. Amen. Send the word to our pastor to bring the word yes. today to the Father. And all the events that we have today, bless all of them. Let everything be successful to the Father. Let's continue to bless us as we go about the service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Easily be one of our nieces and one of our nephews. Easily be 
Amen. It could have been another way to where the gun went off and actually have harmed somebody. So that being stated, we are calling for prayer on this Thursday. So those that can, those that will, uh, we have some other churches that are participating with us. This is not an old world thing. This is a Jesus thing. Yeah, it's not, yeah, amen. It's not an old world thing. This is a Jesus thing uh, because he tells us that we should always pray uh, and uh, to not cease from that. So on uh, Thursday night, those that able, I ask that you would gather with us on as we bombard heaven. We want the Lord to move. We don't know why God sometimes does what he does and allow things to happen. Uh, certainly, uh, but those of us, I'm uh, not that old, but uh, uh, at least when I was in school, the only drills that we had were fire drills. And every, every so often we have a tornado drill. Those were the only drills we ever had. And now, our children are having to have these shooter drills. Uh, how, whatever they call them, but what are, they, what are we going to do uh, if someone goes on the campus with a loaded gun? Who would ever thought that this would come? Certainly, I didn't think that it would be like this. And uh, ever since Columbine in 98, uh, 90, 96, 98, one of those two, uh, it, it, things have been ongoing with these mass shootings. And certainly, some of this is demonic, uh, but some of this is also mental. And so that being stated, uh, we've been talking about in the Bible study about strongholds. So uh, I will say this, uh, that's why it's very important uh, when someone is talking, you know, a little left, uh, when someone is talking kind of unusual, uh, sometimes you just want to say a, a special breath. You know? uh, sometimes it could be just things going on because we're human. But then because if it's a traumatic experience, uh, I was listening to someone say uh, on yesterday that there was a, uh, there was a, young boy that had uh, set the apartment on fire. And uh, when he set the apartment on fire, his the house on fire, his brother, or one of his siblings was actually in the bed. And they asked him, why did he do that? He said, well, the boys has told me to do it. Uh, and so certainly, you know, some of this is demonic. It's not God, certainly. Uh, but then some of this, these people are in need of help. Uh, and, and, and let me just, I said before, say, there's nothing wrong but you know who Jesus is, and you have a therapist. That's right. And so we shun that for years. You don't need no therapist. I just got Jesus. No, that's what the problem is. Because some you realize that sometimes you can't talk to your family. Come on, somebody. Amen. I mean, you can't. Amen. I, the pastor don't do so much. I'm not a. Amen. I'm not a licensed therapist. Amen. I can pray for you. Amen. But when it comes to critical and, 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 and serious care, uh, I cannot write prescriptions up in prayer. And so that being said, we've just learned over the years that uh, we need to uh, certainly be a little bit more wiser as it relates to God would not have us to be ignorant. Yeah. And let me, I said, so those that have a therapist, the reason why I know it is because I have one. Amen. Yeah, amen. I, and I had one, uh, those that do know, uh, with this anxiety thing that we've suffered from uh, since 2006. It's some, oh, he can say, yes, I am. But sometimes God will have you. Uh, to where you uh, will seek some outside attention. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Stop, stop, stop knocking folks that go get some hit Because sometimes they're the ones, uh, you're the one that really need to be there. <laughs> All right. I'm being serious about this thing. Yeah. Amen. So that's not knock folks. Amen. You know, you got some people, I don't go to a therapist, but you're taking 55 pills a day. Uh, sometimes if you go to the therapist, it can help regulate that stuff. And so I'm not making fun of him, but let's not make light of these things, is what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with you going to a therapist. There's nothing wrong with you going to get some help uh, and, and whatever you need. And a lot of pastors now are seeing therapists because of the load uh, since COVID. A lot of leadership are finding themselves in those predicaments. And certainly they're saved, amen. But certainly sometimes you just got to do what you got to do uh, to make sure that you'll function, amen. If I'm not helping you as a pastor, uh, then I can help you as a people. So I gotta make sure I got you know what I'm talking about. Amen. I can't be climbing up a wall and then trying to prove something to you. I got I gotta minister to my own self. Yeah. I mean, don't need, they don't need a in the house, everything is tore up. And I'm tearing up everything in the house and everybody walking on the eggshells and you know, we you know, uh, I'm just, you know, Joe Clark. <laughs> and then get him trying to put air and no, we have to be real. And so God wants us to be balanced. Yeah. He wants us to be healthy. Yeah. Healthy first in the mind. Mental, that the, you know, your mental is what's important. So, with that being said, may have said too much, but I need to say the don't thing because some don't show folks that uh, do that. Now. And, I, and, I, and when I first went, I'm saying this to help somebody. Yeah. 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 Help 
first one, not first one, no, you know, because we as Caucasian people, we don't, I mean, African American, we don't believe in that type of stuff. We're going to that now, right? And then my doctor up and said, Mr. Cobb, if you don't know, the therapist uh, can help because with those anxiety attacks, and I think, uh, and I don't, I'm just you know what I'm talking about with those, and you know, you be somewhere, and the next thing you know, you just feel like the room is closing up. First time I had mine, let me just say this on day because I just feel it, I need to say it. And so if you this ain't for you, just let go over your head. I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, because we can be saved and still struggle. Amen. I had my first anxiety attack in church. Mm-hmm. Didn't know I was having it and thought I was having a stroke. And uh, I knew my right side was going out. And I said to myself, I'm not gonna have a stroke in here. So Pastor Pastor was preaching in the pulpit. I left Star Hole and got in my car. And I was getting ready to hit the highway. And I felt that right side getting weaker and weaker. And uh, I said, okay, so let me back up. I went to that uh, corner store there and went inside thinking about, let me, maybe I get something to drink. Well, didn't know it at the time, but drunk one of my favorite drinks. I uh, got me a Dr. Pepper, and Lord have mercy, why did I do that? Next thing I did, mean, just, you know, everything just went out of, out of whack. So I called the paramedics and they said, uh, uh, son, you know, have you sit down. And I couldn't sit down because I said, I'm not going to have no stroke just sit here on the floor. I was trying to bed. When that adrenaline kid it kicked in, it's so serious. And so I was sitting there, and I said, okay, now I'm dead. He did, I said, okay, if I'm going to have a stroke, Lord, you might help. You know, this is how your mind will go. Trying to help somebody here today. And uh, certainly, when I got the pyramids got there, I got in the back of the, uh, I said, meat wagon, but uh, the airway. <laughs> When I got in the back, the sister said, and she said, Mr. Cobb, you just have anxiety attacks. She said, I have them too. She said, if you just calm down, and if you just breathe normal, your muscles will begin to relax. And as I just began to relax, my muscles just began to relax, and uh, everything was well. Now, I was, I was plumb exhausted. Because my body had felt like I had been in a fight. And since that time, I went to my primary position and went back, and my doctor said, this is something serious when you are uh, just in normal city. I mean, you going to the dry cleaners. The next thing I know, I'm driving on lunch break. Didn't go back to work because I'm in a, an anxiety attack. Couldn't drink caffeinated drinks because of anxiety. And, 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 and had to take medication in the morning. Had to take medication during the day. Had to take medication at night. And, uh, Someone said, well, at that time, I was not even in my 20s. Well, yes, I was in my early 20s. And I'll never forget that. The second anxiety attack uh, was uh, I was in the church. God bless his soul. Uh, Deacon Austin Harris uh, came in the back of the church with me. And, uh, he began to talk with me. And, I just, and, and, and so I went through that and got, got all right. But someone said to me, they said, brother, you won't always have me. He said, you will always have these. And because I always, because I have them for years. And so you will always have these. And I internalized that thing. And so I feel as if I could not overcome it. And for about two years, God delivered, and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't, I didn't take no medicine, no nothing. And even now, I'm not on this regulated thing, but if you all wouldn't know it if I feel myself getting, you know, in that way, because I know how to maintain it. Uh, but we're not just popping pills either. My point is this. I had to learn for myself. When people try to tell you something and they ain't been through it, you got to turn the other ear to that song. Get the help that you need. Because a lot of us are suffering from these things. Yeah. You sit there suffering because you want to someone to say, get the help you need. If you need some help, go get some help. Go across town to do what you got to do. I am not ashamed to say it. Uh, you got to do what you got to do to make sure you can function. And it don't mean that God don't, you know, people tell you, well, you mean saved because if you were saved, you wouldn't have this. Sometimes God has to make a believer out of you to let someone know that I'll give you the grace to carry this. Are you hearing what I'm saying over there? Somewhere collapsed, 
You just keep going. Yeah. When I look at myself today, I think I look pretty good. I ain't looking crazy because God will keep you where you want to be kept. Conversations. Yeah. Why are why do we see what we see in the house of God? And so that means it's more than just uh, uh, we didn't put a lock on it. Some of this stuff is uh, traumatic, and so uh, don't be ashamed, Amen. And, and, and so that being said, God bless you. Uh, that's my testimony. And when God, has, you know what? And when God delivers you, you can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk about it. Yeah. Like I can. Yeah. And what God has done for me. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna worship the Lord. We're gonna, gonna turn over to our Amanda Stevens. Give her a hand as she comes forth and take this one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
on today and to our media uh, team here. Thank you so much to our uh, young people. Uh, certainly, I'm excited for us to get the renovation going uh, so that that uh, uh, will be a place that's more isolated, secluded for, for them as it relates to us. And I think visiting on the board, and certainly for the other ways that we're doing, uh, we're planning to do in 2023 for our church. And we cannot say that enough. Uh, thank you to our Grow Life family uh, for that which you continue to do and to give. So good to see those that uh, tip in on us as always. Amen. Didn't have to do it, but thank God that you did. It's so good to see your faces. Amen. To uh, both uh, sets. Amen. Of the Harrises. Amen. We have two sets of Harrises on today. Amen. Let's all give them a hand on today. We thank God. Amen. recognition of visitors, amen, and, uh, but we do say thank you to uh, uh, you, what you continue to do, and those that show up here. Uh, you don't have to be nice and kind, and that strengthens us uh, with others uh, that uh, uh, may not be directly a part of membership here, but certainly a part of our families and extended family, amen. God bless each and every one of you, and uh, to Sister Lonnie, amen, I got to say, God bless you, amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Who you are. So, amen. amen. You all. Amen. I say something so, uh, how do you know, amen? We, we do, amen, as we go online and see the names pop up. Uh, certainly, we do thank God and how uh, you've been a blessing. She knows what I'm talking about to our ministry on last year. Amen. Thank God for, uh, for, for you and certainly to all of you that just continue. Cannot say thank you enough. We're almost at the end of the year. And uh, we have did a great job this year of uh, just giving God what he deserves. And so uh, if I could tell you the thing for next year, I would. But the Lord has not pleased me to say it. But certainly I'm excited about uh, what the Lord has to say to us for 2023. But uh, we're in 2022. Amen. Let's continue to make the most of our time uh, as it relates to those things. Let's turn with me to uh, St. Matthew chapter 1. Uh, we would be so kind to... Rest upon our feet. Say Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. We finished as we're in this Advent season on last Sunday. Amen. We talked about, amen, how uh, sometimes uh, there are lessons that we have to learn while we're in the waiting room. And talk about how Simeon had to wait, amen, for the birth of Jesus. Uh, but God, even though he was uh, elderly, God did not allow him to die until he had saw what he had promised him. So today, we want to continue as it relates to the Advent season from this passage of scripture. St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And uh, we'll uh, drink 18 to 25. And we'll be in your hearing from your consideration from the new King James Version. If you have it, say amen. Amen. All right, amen. If you need just a few moments, say wait. All right. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother, uh, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and don't, don't skip over that, a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take, your, take you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife. And did not know her till she had brought forth a firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, speak in this house. We need a word from you. And God, as you do these things, we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And God bless you, Jesus. This may be released from your duties. Uh, from this passage of scripture on today, I want to talk to you from this subject. Notice what the 19th verse says. Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not 
Not wanting to make her a public example because might have put her away privately or secretly rather. Uh, and then goes on to talk about how he had this encounter with the angel. And, uh, and at the end of the text that I've read in consideration on today, uh, there uh, is where in the 25th verse uh, it says that, and he called his name Jesus. And he called his name Jesus. I want to talk to you from the subject from today a good man. It's hard to find. Yeah. A good man is hard to find. All right, John, you're not a man yet. You're still a baby. You know, a good man. It's hard to find. You've ever had trouble reading and understanding the scripture. One of the easiest and most exciting ways to engage the word of God is through a method of study called character identification. Character identification is something each and every one of us can use as we're reading the Word of God. It's helped, found it to be helpful for me. And the good thing is that it does not require for you to be a theologian. It does not require for you to possess a PhD or acquire any knowledge of Greek and Hebrew. But rather, all it requires is a Bible and the ability for your mind to be stretched so that rather than minimizing the Word of God, uh, you maximize it by thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm. Character identification says that when you read a scripture and you see the names of individuals and people that you that you should identify with what you, with whom you're reading about, and so you place yourself in their shoes and you imagine how you would feel if this or whatever you're reading was happening. Will be going on through your mind as you read the text. That's what you have to do when you embrace character identification. And when we learn to embrace that concept, I think we will understand and digest the word of God a little easier. When you learn and identify and do your uh, due diligence as to understand uh, Bible characters and understand their attitudes, understand their personalities, it helps you to understand that why sometimes texts and scriptures say what they say because sometimes the scripture is based upon the personality or characteristic of the person. Uh, how would you feel if you were able and God called you to leave your dad's house for no good reason? Uh, then you, you, you need to learn how to walk by faith. How would you feel if you were Sarah and an angel came to you in your 90s and told you that you were going to have a baby? This is character identification. Now put yourself in the place of that character or the person that you're reading about. Uh, what would be going through your mind if one of the disciples at the table uh, and, 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 and then you're sitting there with Jesus and you begin to realize that one of them in the group, you don't know which one it is, is about to betray your master. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how you would feel to know that, that, that the one that would betray him uh, is sitting there at the table? You don't know which one it is, uh, but he's about to uh, be the one that, uh, that, that sets up the scene for the death and execution of your Lord and Savior. Can you imagine what Zacharias must have felt when the angel came and told him that his elderly wife was now fertile again and they had some things to take care of to bring the son into the world? What did Mary as a young teenager who was engaged and a virgin, but yet being told that God has a plan for you that's going to cause you to be the mother of the Savior of the world. How would you feel? People, God, can you imagine what it's like to be married? So many times we, uh, and we know that the Catholics really adore her, uh, Hail Mary and all of this, uh, but saints, it ain't about Mary or Joseph, it's about Jesus. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Uh, but in the text of the day, what we're trying to bring to the forefront is when we think about what Mary and how she felt, we cannot forget to think about how Joseph must have felt. Now, stay with me because the truth is that the announcement of the birth of Jesus was exciting for everybody else except for Joseph. Okay. The shepherds were elated to know that the Savior has come. Mary was excited to know that she'll be the mother of the Savior. Elizabeth is proud to know that her cousin will bring forth the birth of Jesus Christ. So much so that her own baby in her womb leaped. Everybody is happy about the announcement of the birth of the baby except for Joseph. Because what you must understand is that Mary's pregnant for Joseph is a problem. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, her, her, her conception is, is, is going to cause some controversy. So, so, so this pain will cause some people to start talking. 
happen in scandal. Marriage showing up. Pregnant has put Joseph in the dilemma where he's got to make a difficult decision. What do I do with a woman who has broken her vow and shown up pregnant and she's engaged to be married to me? I don't understand this. They, well, they were not married yet when he found out that she got pregnant. She's a virgin. He knew he had no relations with her. How would you feel if your woman, which was a virgin, you had no relations with her, now all of a sudden, she's pregnant? I believe that's how the Maury Polk show is. Now this. So Jerry Springer. Yeah, Phil Donahue, I know I'm kind of going back. Sally, Sally Jesse, and Ralph, you know her. Richard Lady, it would have been on one of the shows because think about this. How would you feel if you knew that you, the person that you were uh, engaged to, that you had no relation with them, but yet they were pregnant? So, no doubt this pregnancy causes Joseph some strife. It makes you wonder, why did God put Joseph through all of that? It seems to me that God could have written the story a little different concerning the birth of Jesus. Maybe he could have kept Jesus or Joseph out of the whole story. Think about it. Joseph really was not necessary for the pregnancy because she was conceived by the Holy Ghost. So why did God drag Joseph into this situation? And, and if he wasn't necessary for the pregnancy, then God surely could have, uh, have, have married uh, go through the whole thing without Joseph. But because, uh, do you know His fiance is pregnant and he has nothing to do with it. She's been conceived by the Holy Ghost. Why did God bring Joseph into this narrative? He could have kept him out. He didn't have to do with him, her being pregnant. So why was he brought into the situation at all? But the, but the fact of the matter is, is that God gives a grace for single mothers. Oh, yes, he does. Because God.
There's something about those that he's going to pass on to Jesus through the way he lives his life that will help Jesus fulfill God's assignment on him. Let me tell you why Joseph is a good man. First reason that he's a good man is because he restrains his resentment. He controls his contempt. He, he does not act out of rage. He, he's disciplined even when he's disappointed. He does not try to hurt Mary because he thinks that uh, she has hurt him because you do know that her people hurt people. Yeah, yeah. Joseph is a good man because he knows how to control his anger. Yeah. Beloved, when you go home and think about character identification, it doesn't take much thought to understand how Joseph must have been feeling. Imagine now, if you were engaged and an angel comes to you alone and tells you that you're going to be pregnant. That's what happened to Mary. She by herself and an angel comes to her and tells her, I'm about to get you pregnant. And it's going to be by the Holy Ghost. Come on, this here. The angel then tells her to go tell her cousin Elizabeth. Stay with Elizabeth for three months. And when she comes back, she's pregnant. Let me say that again. She's engaged to be married. She leaves in the middle of the night and goes to her cousin's house. Stays at her cousin's house for three months and has the audacity to come back. And now she's found to be pregnant. We said one more time, huh? You are his woman. All right. And you leave your man for three months. Talk about, I'm going to go stay with my cousin. And uh, while you're at your cousin's house, when you come back, you come back pregnant. Now, the Bible says, she was found to be pregnant, which means that not only was she pregnant, but she was short. Yeah. Yeah. Character identification, how would you feel? If your woman, your boo, your baby, your honey, <laughs> sugar in your Kool-Aid in your tea, uh -huh. the glaze on your donut, Oh! 
my walk. But that, that's not how it happened. He found out after the fact. Character identification. Can you feel the joke? Can you imagine how it could have been going through his mind? The angel only tells her. That, 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 that the angel tells him later, rather. Uh, he, he didn't get a heads up that God was at work. He only knows that, that it's God after she comes back pregnant. It doesn't take too much to imagine how he feels. He's hurt. He's angry. He's disappointed. He feels disrespected. And if it would have been me, like I said, I would have been blood boiling hot. How dare she disrespect him like that? Notice that in that day and time, you tell you there were several things that Joseph could have done. In that day and time, uh, uh, sisters, uh, a woman was not given the full dignity of humanity. In other words, a woman was viewed as a man's property. And so, Mary is really Joseph's property. Uh -huh. And she becomes, or she comes back having been violated, violated from seemingly another man because, uh, uh, and so, or rather, when she comes back, Divided by the men under the mosaic law, he could have had her stoned to death. Stone. He does not put it on Facebook. 
He doesn't put it on Instagram. It's not on Twitter. It's not on Snap. It ain't on TikTok. And whatever else is out there. But notice, he restrains himself. This is a society.
That's why we said it off. <laughs> That's why we tell people off. <laughs> because we are offended. When you are hurt, when you're angry, you are off. So you got to know how to pull back and think. Yep. Is it worth my intelligence? Mm -hmm. Is it worth me displaying myself in the way you move here? Uh, because the worst time to trust yourself is when you're mad at her. So the more you are pause and think and seek God and pray to God and serve God, allow God to order yourself because here's what happens when you pause and pray. God will show you another way. Joseph is hurt. Joseph is angry. Thinking about it and praying about it. And the an angel goes up and says, uh, God told me to tell you that the Holy Spirit is at work and you should go ahead and still marry her. When you pause and you think, God will show you another way that you should go. And don't you know that moment that I came out here and dropped off when I didn't drop off in the office got hit back. By the time I got back home, I still responded. But my, my response was completely different. Mm -hmm. Because when you pull back, when you pull, sometimes you just got to walk away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're mad, when you know somebody talk right there, say, no, hold up, give me a second, and just walk away. I'll be back. After these messages, I'll be right back. Because sometimes if I respond right there and there, I'm not going to represent Jesus like I'm supposed to. And I don't want to, and the reason why it's serious is because by the, I can tell you all, I really can. But what if Jesus comes back in the midst of me telling you all? Where am I going to go? So you got to pull yourself back from the situation. Uh, so Hannah says, don't be afraid God has another way. Have you ever been angry? Want to do something, but you pause and pray, and the Lord shows you another way to get that thing done. The Lord shows another way to turn around. The Lord shows you another way or another option on the table. The Lord opens another door in front of you that you can even think with them. The Lord always has a way yeah. of directing your steps when you're angry, but you gotta be open to it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, the prison is filled with a lot of folks that couldn't pause. That's why we ought to thank God because it couldn't get us locked up. Amen. You know, everybody in prison ain't more because they, mm -hmm. they some, some of them are locked up because they didn't take the time. That's, right. that's, that's, that's how dangerous it is that you yes. don't pull back because that reaction that you do may cause you to go downtown ride. Right. I don't know if they still got it now, but they used to call it that magazine. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about because I know somebody. Uh, Mug shots, whatever you call it. Slam them. I don't know if they still got it now. A few people used to get that ready. Child, guess who in the slam of the day? They locked up yet. Call, call. You call, I ain't gonna call. You call them and see what happens. I don't know if the slam was good, but I don't want to misrepresent God. I don't want to be on Channel 5. I don't want to be the highlight on News Channel 11.
to stop and think. But then, that understands that you got to have strength to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Well, I trust you. If everybody was like Brother Joseph, I ain't trying to call you out because I got own stuff to call you. I ain't trying to show you up because God could have showed me up. I ain't trying to, well, guess what they did? You know what? I ain't said that because all of us got something that we need to correct. Amen. Right. And the people that know in other people's business, the fact is they didn't realize that they, 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 this is what you call messy. <laughs> <laughs> messy people spend so much time in other business because, they, because their business is a mess. Right. And so what they're, doing, what they're trying to do is make your stuff messy because, they're, because their stuff is messy. But is there anybody that's saying, you know what? I'll get high risk, he'll still get them. Come over to my house and mess up my stuff. Amen. Amen. All right. You can't mom, cat, dog, brother, sister. Keep your mess over there. Because we clean over here. I mean, we back with everything. We clean with cold box over here. I'm going to be the germs out. But it's serious because think about the church will be a lot further if you have a lot more jokes.
Amen. 